Picture this, a bomber so old, its first pilots are now great-grandfathers. Yet, this same aircraft, it'll still be dropping bombs when their great-grandchildren retire from the Air Force. The Boeing B-52 Stratofortress. Eight engines of raw power, a wingspan wider than a football field, and a silhouette that struck fear into enemies for seven decades. Originally designed as a temporary solution, a nuclear-armed placeholder, until something better came along. But here's where it gets wild. Those B-52s thundering over your head today? They rolled off the assembly line before the Beatles recorded their first album, before color TV was common, before humans walked on the moon, and the Air Force plans to fly them until at least 2060, making them literal century-old combat aircraft. No other warplane in history comes close, not even close. Think about that for a second. While your smartphone becomes obsolete in two years, these bombers, they keep flying decade after decade. The B-1 Lancer, already being retired. The B-2 Spirit, heading for the boneyard. Meanwhile, the B-52, it's just got approved for another $48 billion in upgrades. What secret does this Cold War relic possess that its high-tech replacements don't? Is it the massive payload, 70,000 pounds of anything from iron bombs to nuclear weapons? The intercontinental range that lets it strike anywhere on Earth? Or something deeper, an engineering philosophy that accidentally created the perfect survivor? Here's what should blow your mind. The B-52 has outlived the very threats it was designed to counter. It's adapted from high-altitude nuclear deterrent to low-level carpet bomber to precision strike platform to hypersonic missile truck. So, I'm asking you, in an age of stealth fighters, AI-controlled drones, and space warfare, why does a bomber designed with slide rules refuse to become obsolete? What makes the B-52 immortal when everything else fades away? Transport yourself back to 1952. Stalin has the bomb. Nuclear war feels inevitable, and Boeing's engineers are handed an impossible task. Build a bomber that can deliver atomic weapons anywhere on Earth, survive Soviet defenses, and do it fast. What they created wasn't just an aircraft, it was engineering overkill personified. The B-52's specifications, they read like a fantasy even today. Eight turbojet engines hanging from massive swept wings, a range exceeding 8,000 miles without refueling, payload capacity that made other bombers look like toys. But here's the genius move that nobody saw coming. Boeing didn't just meet the Air Force requirements, they obliterated them. Every system had a backup, then a backup for the backup. The wings, overbuilt to handle stresses that would snap lesser aircraft in half, the fuselage, heavy gauge aluminum, thick enough to absorb battle damage and keep flying. Landing gear so robust, it could handle runways that would cripple modern jets. But why all this excess? Because this wasn't just about building a bomber, it was about preventing Armageddon. B-52 crews lived on constant alert, engines running, nuclear weapons loaded, waiting for the order everyone prayed would never come. The aircraft had to be ready to launch within minutes, fly for 15 hours straight, penetrate the most sophisticated defenses on Earth, and deliver its apocalyptic payload. No room for error, no tolerance for weakness. Here's the beautiful irony. In overbuilding for a nuclear war, Boeing accidentally created something timeless. That original paranoia, that demand for absolute reliability, it gave the B-52 bones so strong they'd outlast the Cold War the Soviet Union, and every bomber that came after. Remember this number, 744. That's how many B-52s Boeing built. Today, 76 of them still fly, same airframes, same basic design, just endlessly evolved. Nobody in 1952 imagined these bombers would still be flying in 2024, but that original philosophy, durability above all else, planted the seeds of immortality. Here's what separates legends from relics, the ability to evolve or die. And the B-52, it's the ultimate shapeshifter of military aviation. Vietnam transformed everything. Suddenly, this high-altitude nuclear bomber was skimming jungle canopies, dodging SAMs, and carpet bombing the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Operation Linebacker 2, the Christmas bombing of 1972, 
saw B-52s brave the world's densest air defenses to pummel Hanoi. 15 were shot down in 11 days, yet they kept coming. Why? Because when ground troops needed overwhelming firepower, nothing else could deliver it. Fast forward to 1991, Desert Storm erupts, and the B-52 delivers a masterclass in adaptation. Flying 35-hour round trips from Louisiana, these bombers dropped 40% of all coalition munitions. But here's the twist, they weren't just dropping dumb bombs anymore, they were launching cruise missiles from beyond the horizon, staying safely out of harm's way. Then came Afghanistan and Iraq, and the B-52 evolved again. Now it circles at 40,000 feet for hours, a flying artillery battery on call. Ground troops in trouble? The B-52 drops GPS-guided JDAMs with pinpoint accuracy. No more carpet bombing. This is precision warfare from a platform older than most soldiers' parents. But wait, there's more. The B-52 has been a maritime patrol aircraft hunting submarines, a mine layer seeding harbors with magnetic death, a standoff missile platform launching the latest hypersonic weapons. Each role demands new technology, digital displays replacing analog gauges, satellite communications, electronic warfare suites, weapons that didn't exist when the bomber was designed. Here's the Mindbender. The same aircraft that prepared for nuclear Armageddon now provides close air support for special forces. The bomber built to end civilizations now performs surgical strikes to minimize collateral damage. How many machines can claim six decades of constant reinvention? While other aircraft become obsolete, the B-52, it just adds another chapter to its resume. And that's the real question, isn't it? In a world that changes at digital speed, how does a 1950s bomber stay relevant? The answer is simple. When you build something truly great, limits become launching points. Want to know the definition of irony? The Air Force has spent decades and billions trying to kill the B-52. They've thrown every replacement imaginable at it. And the old bomber just laughs and keeps flying. Let's talk about the killers that weren't. The B-1B Lancer. Sleek, supersonic, designed to penetrate Soviet defenses at treetop level. Cost $283 million per aircraft. The problem? Mission-capable rates below 50%. These supposed B-52 replacements? They spent more time in maintenance than in the air. Crews joke the B stands for broken. Then came the B-2 Spirit, $20 billion of pure stealth technology, invisible to radar, capable of penetrating any defense. Operating cost, $120,000 per flight hour. For comparison, the B-52 costs $88,000. And here's the kicker, we only built 21 B-2s. Lose one, and you've lost 5% of your stealth bomber force. Meanwhile, the B-52, it maintains a 65% mission readiness rate, day after day, year after year. But surely the new B-51 Raider, it'll finally retire the buff. Not so fast. Production is glacial, costs are astronomical, and fully operational capability, it's still years away. So, what does the Air Force do? Awards the B-52 another $48 billion in upgrades. Here's the uncomfortable truth nobody wants to admit. Sometimes, boring beats brilliant. The B-52's massive airframe, it accepts upgrades like a platform, not a prison. New engines? Bolt them on. Digital cockpit? Rip out the old and install the new. Hypersonic missiles? The bomb bay's waiting. Try that with a stealth coating that needs babying or composite materials that crack under stress. Ask any wing commander what they want for a global strike mission. Nine times out of ten, they'll take the B-52. Not because it's sexy or stealthy, but because it works every time. The pattern is almost comedic at this point. Air Force announces B-52 replacement. Replacement has issues. B-52 gets another upgrade. Rinse and repeat for 70 years. Maybe that's the lesson here. In the race between innovation and reliability, never bet against the tortoise. Imagine taking a 1950s muscle car and dropping in a Tesla powertrain. That's essentially what's happening to the B-52 right now, except the stakes are measured in billions of dollars and global deterrence. The transformation is staggering. First up, those ancient TF-33 engines that guzzle fuel and belch black smoke. Gone. Eight new Rolls-Royce F-130 turbofans, they're coming. 
delivering 30% better fuel efficiency, drastically reduced emissions and maintenance intervals that'll make crew chiefs weep with joy. These engines will outlast the airframe itself, but engines, they're just the beginning. Step into a current B-52 cockpit and you're transported to the 1960s. Analog dials, mechanical switches, systems that require three crew members just to manage. The B-52J changes everything. Glass cockpits, touchscreen displays, data links that network with every asset in theater. Pilots will command missions with the computing power that once required entire buildings. The APG-79 AESA radar, it turns this bomber into an all-seeing eye. Weather that would ground other aircraft becomes manageable. Targets kidding in clutter get exposed, and the weapons integration? Mind-blowing. Hypersonic missiles, nuclear-armed long-range standoff weapons, conventional cruise missiles, smart bombs, the B-52J will carry them all. Its bomb bays and wings are becoming universal adapters for whatever hellfire the future demands. Here's where it gets really wild, 3D printing. Parts designed in the 1950s, manufactured by companies that no longer exist, they're being recreated atom by atom in specialized printers. The supply chain that should have killed the B-52 decades ago is being resurrected through digital manufacturing. But let's be honest, this modernization is hitting turbulence. Engine deliveries slipping to 2027, radar integration delays, cost overruns that make accountants nervous. Every upgrade uncovers new challenges in airframes that have been flying since Eisenhower was president. Yet, the Air Force keeps doubling down. Why? Because they've learned something profound. It's easier to make an old bomber new than to make a new bomber work. The B-52J won't just be modernized. It'll be one of the most capable platforms in the inventory, a 1950s design hosting 2030s technology. If that's not the ultimate middle finger to planned obsolescence, I don't know what is. So, here we are, seven decades later, still asking, why won't the B-52 die? The answer isn't just in the metal and engines, it's in the space between what we thought we needed and what actually works. The B-52 succeeds because it was accidentally built for forever, over-engineered when over-engineering was the only option, flexible when nobody knew flexibility would matter. But there's something deeper here, something about the nature of true innovation. We live in an age obsessed with disruption, the newest, fastest, stealthiest. Yet, the B-52, it reminds us that sometimes the real revolution is evolution, that durability beats novelty. That boring reliability trumps exciting complexity. Ask any B-52 crew member and they'll tell you it's more than a machine, it's a statement. While adversaries chase the cutting edge, America fields a bummer that predates their entire air force. There's power in that, psychological weight that no stealth coating can match. The numbers tell the story, $88,000 per flight hour versus $120,000. 65% readiness versus 50%, decades of proven combat versus promises of future capability. But maybe the real lesson is this, legends never die because they keep finding new ways to matter. The B-52 isn't preserved like a museum piece, it's constantly reborn, from nuclear deterrent to carpet bomber to precision striker to hypersonic platform. Each era demands something new, and somehow this 1950s creation delivers. What does it say about us that our most advanced military strategies will be executed by a centenarian aircraft? That in an age of artificial intelligence and quantum computing, we trust eight engines and aluminum wings designed before transistors? Perhaps it says we've learned something profound, that the best solutions isn't always the newest one, that there is wisdom in what works, that sometimes, just sometimes, we get it right the first time. The B-52 story isn't really about an airplane, it's about the tension between innovation and reliability, between chasing the future and trusting the proven. It's about building something so fundamentally sound that time itself becomes an ally, not an enemy. So, I'll ask you one more time, is the B-52's immortality a fluke, a stubborn refusal to accept obsolescence, or is it proof that when engineering excellence meets operational flexibility, you create something truly timeless. Drop your thoughts below, because if there's one thing the B-52 teaches us, it's that the best conversations, like the best bombers, never really end. 
And if you want more stories of aviation's greatest survivors, the legends that refuse to fade, make sure you're subscribed. The sky's full of surprises, and we're just getting started. Until next time, keep looking up, you might just spot a legend.